Hi, in this video I'll be guiding you through the step-by-step -step installation of Cox Internet. More specifically, we will be setting up the Cox Panoramic Gateway, which is a combination of a cable modem and a Wi-Fi router. We're gonna start with the basic setup to see if the internet is up and running, then do a more advanced setup, perform some tests, and finally share my thoughts and experience on Cox Internet, as well as on the panoramic Wi-Fi gateway. Before we start, I just need to point out that this is not a sponsored video, and I'm just sharing my own experience. I'm currently shopping around for internet service and testing out different providers. Just to give you a little bit of background, I used to have Cox Internet a few years ago but then switched to Verizon 5G home internet and stayed with them for two years and I talked about it in that video but now there is also T-Mobile 5G home internet so I figured maybe now it's the right time to try them out test them out one by one and see which one is more suitable for me considering everything and I thought of sharing my experience with you because maybe it can help someone who's probably in the same boat my current plan with Cox offers 5 500 megabits per second download and 50 megabits per second upload speeds at least on paper and it includes free unlimited data prices can vary depending on your location bandwidth and other factors so make sure to check their website for the latest details nonetheless this was a good deal but let's see if the quality of the internet is good too we will get to that later but first let's install the modem slash wi-fi router or as they call it the panoramic wi-fi gateway the one they gave me is a Technicolor CGM4331. The modem is Doxis 3.1 and supports 32 by 8 channel bonding. So it is designed to support internet speeds of up to 1 gigabits per second. The Wi-Fi router is a dual band Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax router. It also has 4 Ethernet ports for LAN, 3 of which are 1 gigabits per second and one of them marked with an orange line is a 2.5 gigabits per second port. Now, isn't it strange that even though the internet maxes out at 1 gigabits per second, the device comes with a 2.5 gigabits per second LAN port? Is this overkill or a clever feature? This is a question I get asked quite often, so I'm throwing it back to you. Can you think of a great use case for this or do you think it's an unnecessary addition? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There are also two phone ports for those who get landline service from Cox. Since this is a cable modem, there is of course a coax port to connect the Cox cable coming from the outside. Now we're going to do the basic setup to make sure we have an internet connection. I'm going to connect the coax cable which is coming from the outside to the gateway. Plugging the gateway to the power and wait for about 10 minutes for the gateway to power on. During this time the LED light might start blinking amber which means it is registering on the Cox network. After it is successfully registered we should see a solid white line indicating the gateway is online and fully operational. Now that the internet side or WAN is done, let's check the LAN side which is the local wired and wireless networks. The wired network is easy, I can connect a computer with an ethernet cable to one of the LAN ports and if I open a browser, I should be able to access the internet. For the wireless network or Wi-Fi, the name and password of the default Wi-Fi are written on the bottom of the gateway. I can use that to connect a wireless device to the Wi-Fi and check the internet connection. Now let's move on to more advanced settings such as changing the Wi-Fi and security settings. Normally to do this on any Wi-Fi router you could either open a browser on a computer connected wirelessly or wired to the router, enter the IP address of the router which in this case is 192.168.0.1, go to the web interface, type in the default username and password which in this case is admin for the username and password for the password, log into the router and make the necessary changes. Alternatively, you could install their app and do the same thing through the app on your phone. This process is pretty much standard for any Wi-Fi router. However, for some reason, when I try to make changes such as adjusting the Wi-Fi settings on the Cox Panoramic Gateway through the web interface, it tells me that I can only do that through the app. 
To be honest, it makes no sense to me other than them wanting to force you to use their app. As a network engineer, I'm much more comfortable doing these things on a computer rather than on a phone. Although this is a huge disadvantage for me, at the end of the video, I'll let you know why this is not going to bother me and what I'm going to do so I don't have to deal with this situation. But for now, let's switch to the app. After installing the app, I should log into my Cox account. Then I will see this page with four tabs. In the overview, I can test the internet connection. This involves three tests. First, checking for any outage in the area. Then testing the internet speed from the gateway to the internet. And finally, checking the connection strength to each of my devices. For example, I have three devices connected right now. And according to this, all three have strong Wi-Fi connections. I can also restart the gateway if I need to. Additionally, I can enable or disable advanced security, which I assume is some sort of intrusion detection or intrusion prevention system, which is good. Finally, if I need to share my Wi-Fi name and password with someone, I can do that here either using the QR code or by hitting the share button and texting it to someone else. In the Wi-Fi tab, I can click on Wi-Fi details. Here I can edit Wi-Fi settings, such as changing the Wi-Fi name and password. This section includes SSID, which is Wi-Fi name, the Wi-Fi password, and the security mode. I can choose to broadcast the Wi-Fi name or keep it hidden. I have a whole video about whether hiding your Wi-Fi name is good or not. So definitely check it out if you need to know more details. Finally, I can decide whether I want both bands to broadcast the same name and password or use different names and passwords. This will depend on your network requirements and design. I personally always separate Wi-Fi networks using different names and passwords because I specifically use the 2.4 gig GHz band for my smart home devices and the 5 GHz band for the rest of my devices. This way I can manage them better. Again, I have another video discussing this topic in more details, so feel free to check it out if you're interested. So the Cox Panoramic Gateway, in my opinion, is an okay modem slash Wi-Fi router combo. It is Wi-Fi 6, not the latest Wi-Fi generation, but still good enough. If you follow my channel, you know I'm not personally a fan of combined modem and Wi-Fi routers. I prefer to have a separate modem and Wi-Fi router, or even better, a router and one or more access points. This is a more distributed and professional setup. However, that doesn't mean everyone should do this. As the panoramic gateway might be sufficient for many people. Now, if you're like me, or if you already have a Wi-Fi router that is much more capable than this one, you can set up the panoramic gateway to be a modem only and disable the Wi-Fi router side of it. To do this, you just need to log into the web interface and enable bridge mode. That's it. The gateway will reboot, and when it is booted, it will work as a modem only. Now you can connect your router, wireless router, or mesh router to one of the LAN ports of the modem. This way, I don't need to worry about dealing with the panoramic gateway and its app if I need to change Wi-Fi settings because I can do that on my own Wi-Fi router. Now that we've gone through the setup and initial configuration, let's do some tests. When it comes to download speed, I generally get more than 500 megabits per second, and sometimes it even gets close to 600 megabits per second, which is great. However, the upload speeds are a different story. Despite the plan promising up to 50 megabits per second, I consistently get only around 28, 29, maybe close to 30 megabits per second. I also ran some tests on ping and and jitter for the popular DNS servers 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8 over a 5 minute period each. For the 1.1.1.1, the average ping was 19 milliseconds and jitter was 59 milliseconds. For 8.8.8.8, the average ping was 29 milliseconds and jitter was 54 milliseconds. Now, although the ping times are good, they're not great though, but they're still good. The jitter times are quite high. High jitter can cause issues with real-time applications like video calls and online gaming, leading to a less stable and smooth experience. On a positive note though, in both cases there was no packet loss, which is good. I repeated the same test at different times of the day and got more or less the same results. 
I check the Wi-Fi range of both frequency bands in three areas of my house and compared it side by side with an Asus RTAX86U, which is also a dual band Wi-Fi 6 router. As you can see, the Wi-Fi range of the Asus was better in every location. This is another reason why you might want to consider using your own Wi-Fi router and use the panoramic gateway only as a modem. The reliability of the service has also been a major issue for me. In the last two months, there was an outage in my area that lasted for six whole days. I'm not kidding, six whole days. During that time, the only communication from Cox was that they were working on the issue. In today's world, where everything is online, from streaming movies to working from home, this was a significant inconvenience. It was a terrible experience and really disrupted my daily activities. Another problem I've encountered is that every now and then especially after an outage or sometimes even after simply restarting the modem both the download and upload speeds throttles to just 30 megabits per second this can take a day and a few phone calls to finally get resolved which adds another layer of frustration so overall as you saw i was not very pleased with the quality of my cox internet i experienced an outage that i had never experienced in my life since i started using the internet now i don't know if this outage was a one-time thing or if it will happen again but if you guys also have cox let me know in the comments below how your experience has been in terms of outages and speed do you also face this ridiculous 30 megabits per second issue let me know in the comments below as far as latency, the ping times were okay, but the jitter numbers were not. The only positive thing I guess was the download speed, which was more than what was promised. But even that was not consistent, as every now and then, it also throttled to 30 megabits per second. As for the panoramic gateway, although it might be enough for some people, it is very basic in terms of features. The Wi-Fi range is also average. So if you need a Wi-Fi network that is a little bit more advanced than basic, you're probably better off connecting your own Wi-Fi router. In the next video, we'll be checking out Verizon 5G home internet. They actually sent me a different gateway, which I'm very excited to test. Make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time. Thank you.